Hello everyone. My name is Trinity Aeronaut, and today I am going to give you a very short tutorial, an introductory tutorial on Photoshop. Um, this is uh, should only be 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, I'm going to deliberately shorten it. I am going to go through only the top two uh, layers, uh, uh, two bars. I'm going to also go through these bars over here on your right hand side and I'm going to cover these two panels on the left hand side. Um, I'm also going to cover the middle. This is a, this all of, uh, everything you see here is the workspace. Uh, the top bar is the menu bar. The menu bar has uh, several things on it that we will cover later more in depth. Uh, the second bar is the options bar. It covers things, uh, it covers basically, uh, it changes with, as you choose each tool over on your extreme uh, right hand side. Uh, for example, if you use your uh, text tool, it will have a different set of um, options up here than if you were to choose your brush tool. It also has a different set of options. Now, over here on the far side, on the far left side of your um, options bar, you've got a little um, drop-down bar that ha allows you to choose your workspace. You, uh, Essentials is the default workspace, but you can choose 3D, You could also choose graphics and web, and you can see that the that everything changes here based on that. You can choose motion, and but I'm going to go back to the essentials. You've also got painting, photography. You can reset your um, taskbar. This it resets the current one you're on. You could choose a. You could add a new workspace if, for example, you want to customize your workspace, and you can delete a workspace in case you wanted to delete your customized workspace. So that is um, that is the a, a very short version of uh, a very short tutorial on um, workspaces. Okay, over here we've got. Uh, two panels. We've got a color panel and a swatches panel. The color panel basically does the same thing as the color picker panel over here. You've got um, basically you've got you can choose from either here on your left side or you can choose the color picker. You can see when I choose a color on my color um, palette that it also changes color over here on the color picker. But you may notice that I don't really have a choice to pick a different color over here. Like, I can't pick a yellow or a green or a blue. For that, I would need to choose the green or the yellow or the blue in the middle and okay it. Then I can choose a different color over here. Now, if I close the color picker, I can choose different colors over here. And you will see that when I choose a different color, it is highlighted over here on the foreground color. Now, this basic icon is the foreground and the background color. You can see the default is black and white. The color in the front is the foreground. The color in the back is the background. You will always use the foreground color when you touch your document. If you need to change that, you can use this little icon right here to change it. So then now it goes back to the white and we can just get rid of all that with the white. Okay. 
Um, you've got a rectangular marquee. It allows you to, for example, choose an area and allows you to manipulate that. You can either, you could do something like copy it. You could do something like cut it. Um, then that particular top bar is the move bar. And that, so that gives you an idea about not only the move bar, but the rectangle and the cut icon. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to undo my move. And this is an example where I would go up and I would choose the menu to undo. Um, some of the menu choices up here are, for example, duplicate layer. Uh, you've got all your filters up here. You've got your 3D menu choices. You've got uh, the ability to view. You've got extras. You've got snaps. You've got rulers. You've got your screen mode. It allows you to zoom in, zoom out. You can do a proof. Your window gives you uh, uh, all the choices for the uh, items that you can put on your panels over here. Um, you can add and subtract things from your panels on this menu. Uh, for example, you can put your history, you can click on the history, and it will add the history right here. Now, if you want to go ahead and pop that in to the, um, in, within that panel, you can click on these two icon, these two arrow icons, and that allows you to to um, close it. Now, if you want to close the entire group, you can choose the, the icon with the lines on it, and you can choose to close or to close the whole tab. Okay. You've got the help feature, which gives you an idea about um, uh, not only this version of Photoshop, but also um, about it and it also gives you online help so that if you are stumped you can go and you can figure out where to go from up here you can go to your filters this allows you to go to blur distort pixelate render the this is where things get creative here you can choose pixelate let's say you want mesotint and that'll give you a a um uh, a preview of what you could get. Let's go ahead and undo that. Um, you can also choose, you could, for example, you could choose to render. Uh, um, I don't know, fibers maybe. Uh, anything like anything like this that would completely over overrun this picture, but but you get the idea. Um, okay, so. That is our um, rectangular tool. What we've got here is the polygon and the lasso. We've got the lasso, we've got the polygonal lasso, and we've got the magnetic lasso. So, the uh, lasso would just basically be whatever you want to draw. So, let's say you want to draw this just, uh, I don't know, let's say, let's say you're a masochist and you just want to actually draw all this hair from here and you want to get all close and you want to get all involved and because you know and so that that allows you to um to choose that particular area and again you can copy that you can just work within that area for example you could um lighten that up or you could you go to adjustments you could choose to brighten that or you could uh, add contrast to it and that'll simply add uh, and contrast what you've uh, clicked what you've actually selected uh, so uh, any selection tool whether it's a lasso or a um, or a polygon tool or
um, or the magnetic polygon. Now you can see whenever I uh, whenever I take the selection off of that, that uh, that has actually changed the hair so that it makes it a little bit more um, of a variation. But I'm going to go ahead and undo that. I'm going to step back. Now, an example uh, for the polygon um, tool would be, let's do the polygonal tool, and let's go ahead and go to our old, old world image. Now, this is a pretty nasty image, as you can see. But, using the polygon tool, you can do something like this. You can go ahead and select that little scratch there, that little gouge, and you can go up here to your edit and your fill tool, and you could choose the content aware, and go ahead and you could click on that, and that will fill that as if, as if it never was there. Now you can move that polygon tool all around. You can go ahead and fill all these places and these scratches. And when you are finished, you will see that this looks just like in a matter of minutes, this removes all the scratches. Now this, this works fine for here, and you're like wondering, well, it, it's great for fixing scratches, but what else can I do with it? Well, I'm going to tell you. You can remove stains. And let's say you, you, you have something in the picture that you'd like to get rid of. Um, it, this allows you to pull it out. I'm just going to go ahead and... Look at this. And you can see in a matter of a few minutes, you, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stop this and continue filling. And when I come back, it will all be filled. Okay, as you can see, I have gone ahead and finished all this. And if you look at the background, you are going to notice that it does not have any of those scratches and marks and gouges. Okay, so that is what the um, polygonal uh, um, lasso and fill can accomplish. Now I'm going to uh, skip quick selection tool and the crop tool and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go down here to the healing brush tool on my left so um, using the healing brush tool is a good idea when you can't manage to get anything done or you can't do anything with the um, with the fill tool for example if you look right by the head on the um, on my right side, um, you're going to see uh, uh, the area. Let me go to it. If you see this area right up here, um, right about mid center where the hair meets the uh, background um, that when I go to do a lasso and try to do a a um, fill to fill in that little bit this is what I'll show you this is what happens Let me go back. Okay, doing that, 
and I go and I fill and you will see that this is very unsuccessful. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to undo and I'm going to deselect. And at this point you need to use something else. And the trick here is, and I'm going to use it in the hair here, um, this is where you want to This is where you want to do a healing brush tool. So, healing brush tool, and I can go right down here, right by this white mark. I'm going to go ahead and hold my Alt key down and click, and then I can take this material and I can put it right over top of that area, and then you will see that that fills the area, and it appears as if it's hair. Now the same thing here. So I'm going to hold control down, click, and I can put it over this and over here, and this will give it that hair look. Now, the you know, the, I could get away with doing that in all of those different places because this is a pretty photo and there's not a lot of difference but something like this I think I'm just gonna have to this little spot here I'm gonna have to again do it again so I can put it over and just kind of get that same area now down here I'm gonna make this area smaller so that I can Go in here, hold, and then right over here by this, you can see where I'm working. And you can just kind of get areas here and just kind of go over them with the healing brush tool. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for a little, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. And then you will see that all those areas are filled in and they look really, really, really natural the same way that the hair looks natural up there where that huge white gash was. Now, as you can see, with the exception, uh, I mean, with the exception of the graininess, uh, this looks like a totally uh, uh, new photo. It really does. Um, you can see I've uh, I've used the um, the polygonal tool with fill to fill in all of this background, the little spots that like the the mold down here the black mold and the little gouges that I couldn't uh, I couldn't use the fill uh, on I actually used um, the healing tool on uh, again this works this doesn't just work for old photos if um, you could you could make changes to new photos with this uh, not only is it good for repairing photos uh, also if you want to look here uh, you can also find that um, you can also find a content um, a wear move tool you can or an a patch tool okay that's the t that's that's those tools this is your paintbrush um, you've got a paintbrush a pencil a color replacement tool that's a brush that will replace one color with another um, you've got a mixer brush let me show you what you do with with the um, with the color replace tool so let's say that these lips are I don't know they're purple they're just a little bit purple and maybe you want to make them just a teeny bit more pink so if you go down here you do a beautiful pink color right and uh, giving it a hundred percent you maybe only give it ten percent oh, I'm sorry hold on uh, let's say you've got the color replace on 
and you you maybe do the tolerance of I don't know maybe 10 or 15 again you drop the brush down so that it's very small and you go ahead you go in and you can see how you can change that purple lip to a beautiful pink lip and again if you want to if you want to just try to do this by hand uh, otherwise if you want you could even take the magnetic tool or the quick selection tool you could go ahead and select around select around these lips um, this when you use let's say you do something like this with a selection tool then you can pretty much guarantee that you can turn that that those lips pink without you know without getting any any color on the on the areas around the lips because as you see this really does work and it kind of gives you that clean look around the edge so again deselect and there you go and you replace the kind of purplish lips with a really healthy pink color uh, those are all examples of what you can do with color replace. Um, obviously, the paintbrush is is and the pencil is pretty clear. This is for painting. That others for drawing. Anyway, um, so this is a clone tool. Um, uh, that, that I won't cover that today. I'm really kind of in a rush. This is history. So let's say you choose a history. If you want, you can go back, and then it, let's say you don't like those pink lips, you want to go back to the purple, you do the history tool, and that will take you back to the the, the color you had before. You've got the clear, you've got the eraser, obviously, you've got a background eraser, and this has got to be a favorite of mine, because this is a... This is the magic eraser, and if you click on it, you see that you can remove entire chunks of a color. So that gives you that idea. This is your paint bucket. It's also your gra your gradient tool. Your paint bucket should be pretty clear. That if you do the paint bucket, it's going to cover all the contiguous um, area that you have got. Um, let's undo that also have a black and white gradient which is actually down here and this will literally give you this kind of a color gradient and you know just very nice it kind of gives a little bit of gen uh, uh, of interest to an area that is all white and again you can do two or three um, waves about and and uh, get kind of a variation in this gradient. Oh, there you go. Look at that. I kind of like that. Cool. Okay, that's kind of what I showed. You. That's what I showed you. All right. Now this is uh, the blur tool and the sharpen tool and the smudge tool. Look at this. You see this edge here. This is um, this is is really not realistic. Uh, you, the th the uh, the um, neck doesn't gouge like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pen. I'm going to give myself a nice edge here. Okay, and there we go. That looks good. Now I'm going to go over here to my path, and I'm going to click on that so it's selectable. I'm going to hold my control key down and click on it. 
So that gives it, that makes it a selection instead of a path. And then I'm going to use my smudge tool to fix that. And this is an example of what you would do if you wanted to give it this a more of a realistic uh, fold, um, a, a more graceful curve of the neck and not all that gouging. I'm going to go to select, deselect, and again, all right, that looks really very much better than that gouge, but you can see that there is a hard line there, and in nature you don't have hard lines, so the other tool here is a blur tool. So, and I, I actually, um, all right, so I'm going to, again, make my um, edge a little bigger. I'm going to go ahead and sweep across that. And as you can see, um, these kind of harder edges just kind of smooth them out a little bit. And while that might look slightly blurred up this close, when I pull back, you will see, and again, this picture was taken whenever, before I, I, uh, before I realized everything that you needed to do to take a good photograph in SL. So uh, that certainly needed some repair. Uh, and that's why one reason why I chose this particular um, uh, out, uh, uh, image. Okay, so that's blur and smudge. This is the dodge and burn tool. To dodge something, you want to go ahead and I'm just, you want to, um, you probably, dodge would be lightning. Uh, this, so this would be, uh, dodging would be lighting. So let's say if the, uh, if you wanted to highlight some of the hairs in here and as if there were light catching them, uh, you could actually... If you wanted to, you could you, you could use your highlights here. You could drop your exposure from 100% to, I don't know, 10 or 15. And you could just really spend a little time up there working that. What, but since I'm in a hurry and I don't want this video to last any longer than this, I'm going to go ahead and choose mid-tones. And I'm going to give it 100% exposure just so that I can give you an idea. So this is... This is um, Look at the, all right, and I'm just going to bring it all the way up. So, I mean, so you can clearly see it. This would clearly be over, over a dodged, but this way you can actually see it. And please don't, don't come away with this looking like this. Um, I just am doing it so you can get an idea about the, the way you can do this. And if you want to also burn, Burn will do the exact opposite of dodge. Again, you want to drop that down, and you want to um, do the exposure very low so that you can um, can actually uh, uh, darken what you need to darken. But since I'm I don't have time for that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to let's say you want to decide you want to darken. So basically, that's what you're going to do. Um, there's a different uh, way to do this. I'll show you that another time. I've covered the um, pen with you. This is uh, uh, this is text. This this is Lucinda. But this is for a different. Uh, this is also for a different class. Um, this is uh, your pointer. This is uh, the tool. This this tool is called your path selection tool. So you would basically select a path with that, but you're also going to use it to uh, click. That's clearly your arrow. Um, this tool is your shapes tool. You're not going to use that so much here in the essentials. You would far more likely use this in your art tool. You'd be doing this for creating um, 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 uh, drawing, drawing to, uh, so, uh, anyway, so that's what that would be. This is your hand tool. You may not understand what the hand tool does until you get right in on something like this. And you're going to want to move down and around this, this close. And this hand tool is very useful for taking 
it around as you work on these different areas. Okay? All right, this tool is your magnifying glass. You've got one of three settings, 100%, fit screen, fill screen. So I've told you what this is. This is a quick select, quick uh, mask tool. And this tool is for changing your screen mode. Okay? That uh, particular uh, mask tool is a toggle tool so that uh, you will um, be able to um, uh, turn that on and off with just a touch. Okay, that is uh, basically all the tools and what they do. Uh, next time I will s that in the few in the following tutorials, I'm going to choose one or two tools each day or each tutorial and show you how to use them. Okay? Thank you very much. If you have enjoyed this video, uh, please um, um, like it and uh, subscribe. Uh, I'd like for you to hold on to this image, save it, and just let me show you the difference. So I'm going to save this as, and I'm going to save it as old image 2 so that I don't overwrite old, the old image. Okay, now I'm going to show you I'm going to go ahead and go into these exercise files and I'm going to show you old image and that's what it looked like before and this is what it looks like now. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Um, I appreciate you putting up with, with me for, for all this time, and um, I will see you again.